Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our podcast. This time we're reviewing the underrated Disney series Gargoyles, at least the first season. Yes. When a clan of gargoyles from the Dark Ages are cursed to petrification, they're revived a thousand years later in modern day New York City. And with new evils amongst them, they become the newfound protectors of the city while trying to keep their family together. Mm -hmm. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and we'll pause video. Absolutely. Now, this one was actually uh, suggested by Richard the Imaginator because I've seen him use the show a lot in his videos. And Dudley had actually seen it too, but I didn't know the show existed. I think I saw one person review it and then that was it. Mm -hmm. So I finally bought the DVD to see, you know, what it was all about. And then um, we got to see it. It took a while for us to actually watch it because uh, we had it for a while. We were watching other things. And it's like, oh, you gotta see it. It's a really epic series. And we put it in and it was like, Wow, are you sure this is a Disney show? <laughs> no, it's not. They put their name on it. <laughs> now, I do recall seeing commercials for Gargoyles back when it was originally airing. However, I never watched it. But I was familiar with the show, what it was about, how it looked, and what station it came on. But unfortunately, I never watched it. So this is yet another great show that Rascal and I get to watch together for the first time. Yeah. And apparently this, from what I've uh, learned from watching another review, was that this was meant to be sort of the equivalent or competition for Batman the Animated Series because Cartoon Network had Batman with high in ratings. They had one action show amongst comedy, so Disney decided, okay, amongst the Disney afternoon with DuckTales, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, the gummy bears and all this. We're gonna have a dark series about some gargoyles haunting the night in the middle of the family friendly <laughs> block. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, let's do that. And because they had mixed it up, and unfortunately it didn't last too long, but just enough so it could show its whole story. What's interesting about that is every version of the Batman myth or series is not dark. So I would say for. I would say it looks like it may have been in competition or could have competed with Batman Beyond. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the closest. Yeah. Now, what really stood out about this show is the first thing Rascal said is, oh, you're going to love it because I hear there's a lot of Star Trek stars on. And what's really amazing is there were stars from the next generation, which I recognized everyone immediately. But also there were stars from sequel series of Star Trek whom yet have not been on the series mm -hmm. but now that time has gone forward they have been on Star Trek series so now it's even more Star Trek stars on here yeah because when the at the time this was made those series had not yet been created or aired right so I think that's absolutely hilarious that you've got even more Star Trek stars than were thought originally. Yes. So we'll start off first, not a Star Trek star, but an awesome, fantastic, and legendary voice actor is on right, Keith David. Yes. As the lead Goliath. Uh, yes. And you also had Jeff Bennett mm -hmm. as Brooklyn, Frank Walker as Bronx. Edward Asner. Santa Claus. Right. As Hudson. Bill Fagerbach, a.k.a. Patrick. Yes. As Broadway. And then you had from, and oh, and then you also had Lexington, Lexington voiced by Thorne Adcox Hernandez. Yes. And then we had from, appearing from the Star Trek series, Next Generation, Jonathan Frakes, or number two. Uh, as Xanatos, the evil Xanatos, mm -hmm. and you have Mira, uh, Marina Sirtis as Demona, and she's a villain in here, unlike in Star Trek The Next Generation. Mm -hmm. And then as the show airs, you keep hearing um, these different stars. As a matter of fact, the one who plays um, Maza, the detective, voiced mm -hmm. by Sally Richardson Whitfield, her mom is voiced by Nichelle Nichols, known as Yuhura, from the yes. original Star Trek series. Yeah, so they still had even more Star Trek people. In fact, on the DVD, that's one of your bonus features. It's a, it's a bunch of Star Trek cast in part of the show. <laughs> so that should be fun 
uh, to go back and see. So now let's get to talking about season one and what it actually did for animated series during mm -hmm. that time because this was just something totally different versus anything else that was on besides I would say Batman Beyond. Right. But Batman Beyond came later. Right. So when I said that, duh, I wasn't thinking. That show actually aired later. So really, it didn't compete with any Batman series because it was unlike Batman. Right. It was really a great show in its own right. Right. And, you know, like I said, the tone of it, you got Disney Afternoon, which is fun family show, and then you got Gargoyles, which you could argue was meant for like teens or adults. I mean, they kept it, you know, clean enough and safe enough for kids to watch, but it had a much more mature theme. They even had an episode where uh, Eliza got shot by accident by one of the gargoyles because he was messing with the gun. And it wasn't like it was like a graze or anything. She was actually injured and had to be taken to the hospital. And they and, thought she was going to die. Yes, it was out. And then it was another episode where. Demona was trying to convince one of the gargoyles to join her because all the humans, because uh, one specific group of humans wiped out a lot of their clan. She was showing them how the world was and they were actually showing legitimate crimes and drama stuff you would see in adult shows like crime scenes, domestic abuse, drug dealings and stuff, all sorts of things to show, like to justify her reason for wiping out humans. And keep in mind, this is still a Disney program for families and kids. Mm -hmm. So they really didn't mess around with any of its themes. It was pretty much, it was pretty reality hitting. Much they could put reality in for having gargoyles in it. But, you know, they weren't treating their audience like, hey, this is some minor things or some things we can touch on for kids. They were showing like the true intentions of like why she believes that you know she believes that the human should be wiped out because of all this right also want to mention two things one this series was created by greg wiseman so this is yes. before his young justice turn yeah and you really can see so many elements that appear in young justice later mm. and he was also an uncredited writer for all 65 episodes yes although they show other writers and two this was a star studded there was a star-studded cast of uh, voice acting appearances. Let me rephrase that. There were a lot of actors who, at that time, were not big in voice acting. Yes. And they made a lot of guest appearances. So it was a really fun list of who's who. And we'll just name a few that we know you'll know. Kathy Susie, Clancy Brown, Jonathan Reese davies Jim Cummings, uh, Ed Gilbert... Um, they even had Matt Fuhrer from Max Headroom, which came on, didn't like the show. But they had him on there. They had Cree Summer, Tim Curry, Michael Dorn, another Star Trek Next Generation right. um, cast member. Mm -hmm. Michael Bell, the original Lance. Yes, that was fun to see. They had uh, Brent Spiner, who played Data. Yes. Cam Clark, Diedrich Bader. Bader. So there are just so many. You could go on and on and on. Some of them are older stars who your parents and grandparents may know. But it's just, it was a just a cavalcade of stars. A bar burden. You yes. just had so many people that appeared. And I think probably when this aired, that probably was one of the most fun things of watching this series. Who's going to be on this week? What voice what actor am I going to hear this week? Who's making a guest appearance? Because again, it was so much different versus now. This is what we've come to expect. So many live action stars, not, uh, they either do voice acting in conjunction with live acting or they transfer to voice acting for you know a myriad of reasons. And this is what we come to expect. We also come to expect crossovers from um, English dub actors from anime series yes. into um, American animation. So this is what we expect. Right. But when this came out, this was like a huge thing and it had to be fun to watch and hear who was going to be on there that you loved or were familiar with right. from watching in movies and television shows and so forth. Right. And you also have to bring up for the uh, storyline. Like we mentioned what it was about in the beginning. But in here they actually do like a pretty big, pretty much a pilot movie mm -hmm. 
a opening movie for the entire series. It wasn't even like two or three parts for an hour. It was it, six. Six parts. A six part opening to a series. And by the time you finish that, you're almost halfway through the show already. And it shows like how it starts off like when, when they were in the Dark Ages and they used to protect this castle and protect the people there from invaders and that's pretty much their job but the thing was the people weren't really too grateful i mean they were grateful that the people didn't invade or get attacked but they really said this sort of hatred for gargoyles and it's not explained why just that they, I they, think look, it's monsters. What they look like yeah that's they it. look like monsters so they immediately thought okay just because you do this doesn't mean we're gonna like you, even though you protect us every single day and what was interesting is that they were basing it on that but the gargoyles were intelligent. They spoke English. They interacted with humans. You could tell they were thinking. You could tell they took their emotions into account. They had decision-making processes. They used deductive reasoning. None of that matter. They just looked like this. Right. And that was one of the things that was really odd about watching it, that none of the people took into account their intelligence. Right. And you'll, you'll end up finding out how they end up being petrified for a thousand years because it also shows why they don't trust humans that much mm -hmm. because of these, because of these events. I mean, they even named, they even named uh, Gol uh, Goliath Goliath because they reminded him of the villain in the story of David and Goliath and he was the good guy. Right. So they get to the present day. And it's the same thing. People look at them, they scream, they run. And the ones who do interact with them, except for Maza, want to use them. Or fight them. Or battle with them. or And it's like, some good grief. I'm like, they can't get away. They're probably wishing they could go back in time, return to the past now, and not have to <laughs> deal with this. But the first season was really very interesting. Great storylines. I mean, it's true Greg Wiseman brilliance, as usual. And we would love to see season two. We've got part two of season two. But part one is over $200. So if you guys know anywhere or any way to view um, part one of season two for less than $200, let us know in the comments below, please. Yeah. And be sure to let us know if you have seen this series, either when it originally aired or as we were watching on DVD. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you have any favorite characters? Do you think it's it was a um, I would say an accurate representation of what was going on at the time that it aired? What was going on in America? Right. Because that's pretty much what it seems to depict mm -hmm. without throwing it in your face. Right. If you haven't seen it, then you'll have to buy the DVDs mm -hmm. because from what we can tell, it's not on any streaming service. Unless it's on Disney Plus. That's about so the place. You yeah. can let us know, Phoenix, if it's on Disney Plus right. or not. Oh, definitely one more thing we got to mention before signing off is the um, animation. Yes. Animation is really well done. And it was actually done in Japan, not north, not in uh, Korea. And it really stood out because you could tell by the opening that it was from like the first few seconds something Disney would make. Because the first thing Mama said was that Disney did not make this. That would not be this fluid. Disney did make it. Sure enough, the animation was done in Japan and then sourced to America, but they still qualify it as an American cartoon. Right. So just like Thundercats, both yes. the original and the new one, I'm going to call it an anime because it was made in Japan and then has an English dub. And it's brilliantly done so let us know what you think do you agree let us know yes and be sure to like subscribe and click notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and multiple pause videos absolutely thank you so much for watching i'm rascal entertainment and i'm mom entertainment have a fantastic day peace in flashing lights trying to walk around man who the hell are you what you want to do my man is on you In the mountaintops, rivers and streams Fucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket Give it to you later on in the